Hi, subscribers and viewers. I want to welcome you back to this wonderful channel. So in this video, I'm simply going to continue an episode about Yes, PE series IPPBX I started some time ago. This time we are going to go through the PBX settings. The last one, the last feature we talked about was the core features in the PE series IPPBX system. So kindly sit back, relax, and please listen with a rapt attention. Thank you. So without wasting time, let's quickly log in into our cloud PBS system. And then get going. So I'm logging in into my cloud PBS system. Okay. And um, remember what I'm actually using is a um, trial version. Okay, it's simply a demo version. Okay. So you can see it here. Um, let's quickly jump onto the reason why I'm doing this video. The reason is to locate PBS settings, okay, and then configure these settings and direct. And these settings are preferences, voice prompt, SIP settings, and JITA buffer. We'll go through each of them and really understand how they work, okay. So first of all, let's do it. So first of all, let's do it. Um, um, preferences. Before you set up the whole PBS system, you need to actually come here and set your preferences. Your preferences are what is going to help you to create extensions for your trunks and your, um, I mean, extension users for your uh, core features, other ring groups, extension, conference extension, and other stuff like this. And so you just come here, and then you um, specify the name of the PBS here. Okay, you just need to type it down like I've typed it here. This is the name display format. So first name, last name with space in between. Okay. And this has got to do with um, uh, names for the extensions you will create. Okay. And then you have the maximum call durations. Okay, these are the various maximum call durations. When this is selected, the PBS will hang up the call when the maximum duration is reached. Okay, so basically this is what it does here. So if you select 60 seconds, and this is measured in seconds. If you select 60 seconds, um, the PBS will hang up the call when 60 seconds is up. Okay. We have the DTMF. If enabled, extension. So DTMF simply means dual tone multi frequency. This signal will pass throughout. Sorry, this signal will pass through without being processed. Okay, so if this is enabled, it will pass through without being processed. Okay, and this is the duration of it, which is also measured in milliseconds. So we have the dual to multi frequency duration and then dual to multi frequency gap. Okay? And it says enter the gap in milliseconds between the two DTMF audio signals sent by the PBS. The default is one to eighteen milliseconds. This is one of the most important part of it. So this is where you actually customize the uh, extensions according to how you want it to look like. 
right? So in this case, I can decide that I want my extensions to start from 100, okay, and end at 200. Then here, um, 350 or 360 to perhaps. So when you are done with everything, you click on save, okay. The next one is to move to the voice prompt. This is where you actually um, record a customized voice prompt and then you upload it here, right? So example, you have music on hold. Sometimes when you call some telcos or some supermarkets or some NGOs or companies, um, whilst your call is on hold, there is this um, uh, music or sound that plays to your hearing. This is where you actually do that configuration. This is where we configure it here. Example, um, perhaps I've done this recording, so this is where I just need to upload. So, whenever you call and your call is on hold, this is the music that is going to be played to your hearing. Okay? Then we have the invalid phone number prompt, which is this. If you dial an invalid phone number and there is any recorded voice prompt here, it is going to be played out to you. We have the call failure prompt. When you make a call, um, this prompt is going to be played out to you when a dial is filled because of no available trans or other errors. At this part, music on hold for call forwarding. So this specifies what to play when the caller is put on hold during call forwarding. Okay? So when a call forwarding is initiated, a prompt is going to be played out to you when this is configured. Okay? You have the busy line prompt. When the busy line, when the line is busy, there is a prompt which is going to be played out to you. Okay? So the prompt to play when the trunk is busy, it is used when the SIP trunk responds with 486 response code. So please check out for this response code. Okay? You have the event to notification prompt. The prompt played to no the notification contact when answering an event notification call. It will use the system default notification prompt by default. Okay, so notification prompt will be able to be played out to you when there is a notification. Now let's move to system prompt. So this is where you can actually upload a customized system prompt here. Okay. When you click it, it's going to open up a window for you to upload your whatever. Then you have the download online prompt. This is prompts you can actually download from online sources. Then you have music on hold. So this is where you can actually create your music on hold um, custom prompts. Okay. Then you have your custom prompts. This is where you can click on record new, create a name for it, and then select the extension this recording can be made true. Which means if this is selected, example extension 100 is selected, and you click on record, it is going to ring extension 100 for you to pick it up. When you pick it up, a voice prompt is going to initiates the recording and then you follow the processes. The next one to move on is the digital, I mean the SIP settings, sorry. This SIP settings has got to do with um, certain frequencies and protocols that is needed for your PBS system to establish a communication channel between your hardware, IP phones and then your soft phones. Okay, I mean your software IP phones. So this 
this is the point where certain codecs are selected. Um, you know, like this is the SIP UDP port. The TCP and UDP port of the SIP protocols are the same, 5060. And then um, we have these things down here. Okay. If we move on to the codec, these are the bands and the frequencies needed for communication between your trunks and your extensions. If you come to TLS, you have the SIP TLS port, which is 5060. Okay, so this is the TLS port used for SIP endpoint registration. And this is the default port number. When the PBS system is acting as a server, you select this. When it's acting as a client, you select this. Then you save. If we move on to the session timer, we have the session timer. This is a periodic refreshing of a SIP session that allows both the user, agent, and proxy to determine if the SIP session is still active. The options are no. Do not include time of value in any field. Supported. Include timer in supported header. Require. Include timer value in required header. First, include timer value in both supported and required header. The default is supported. So this is where you actually, um, you know, um, do according to how you want it to be for you, according to how you want the PBS system to communicate and stuff like that. And then we move on to the quality of service. So this is where certain protocols can be selected for you to have a quality of service in terms of uh, making calls in and out from your PBS system. We have the T.38, which is also um, a protocol under the SIP settings. Okay. Example: If this is enabled, SDP in re-invite packet will not add T.38 attributes. Then we have this um, error correction mode. If you move on to advanced, you have incoming caller ID or the ID retriever. Okay, so you have something like get caller ID from. Select from which SIP header field to retrieve caller ID. The default is from. And then you have get DID from. Okay, so these are all settings that can be implemented under the SIP settings, which is also under PBA settings. Okay, and this has got to do with how you want the PBS system to communicate with the trunks and the extensions. The last one to talk about is the Jitter buffer. Jitter buffer goes with trunks and extensions, but unfortunately I don't have any trunk here. Else I would have just selected the trunk here. That is if you want the uh, Jitter buffer to be enabled. So these are the extensions you would have to select to go with the trunks. And then uh, you have this implementation of the digital buffer. You have the fixed, the length of the digital buffer is fixed. And we have the adaptive, which is the length of the digital buffer will vary in size within the range of minimum size and maximum size based on the current network condition. So these are options you can actually implement for you to have a successful PBS settings configuration. When you are done with everything, you just click on apply. Okay. And then you are gone. You know, sometimes you can um, search out for um, names or meaning for this kind of words here. Okay. We can do that online, but um, we don't have the luxury of time. Like the digital buffer 
It's a shared data area where voice packets can be collected, stored and sent to the voice processor and in evenly space intervals. So you can search for digital buffer and actually understand what it means. Okay. Hi folks, thanks for watching this video. We've come to the end of yet another episode under the PBX P series configurations. Thank you for watching once again and I really hope you had a gist on how to go about these particular settings we spoke about. But please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to share my videos, and don't forget to like my videos and your comments are also expected. Thank you for watching.